All right. Good morning. My name is David Bellevue. I'm here with Spectrum Mechanical as a representative. I'm here to do an owner training at the links for the equipment above. Currently, we are at Supply Fan 2, which is a stairwell pressurization. Uh, it is designed to do a fire system. When fire goes into alarm, it, pr it pressurizes the stairwells to keep the smoke and fire out of the stairwells. Currently, we're at SP2 and just want to give you some quick overview of what the equipment is and what's its actual purpose, obviously. Uh, currently with the building engineer, I want to direct that we have a power switch here with a lockbox. Currently what we have done uh, to ensure that no one messes with the power in case someone does take a box out is that we've disconnected the actual shaft, which actually goes to the actual disconnect. So what that ends up doing is it's actually free play, which means that no one will be able to turn it off manually you know, if, if it does get, does get tampered with, so it keeps it online. The second set of switches here are for known as an auto, hand, and bypass. If the system fails on the fire side and you want to do a manual check with a test on the alarm, saying it won't actually call the fire trucks in, you can physically turn this into hand and put into bypass physically. And what it'll actually do is run the motor at 100% for the fan. That's just to check it. Uh, but currently the way the system is set up with the fire panel is to actually be in the auto mode only so that the actual fire controls have full control of the system. So those are the basic functions. Very, very simple, pretty much explanatory. On the inside of the equipment, we have a variable frequency drive that is maintained at a specific hertz by test and air balance for each individual stairwell. So there's a total of two stairwells we have in this, but this is on this one particular first. There should be absolutely no programming or any touching whatsoever of that VFD. Currently it is set up with a fireman's override. I programmed it so that basically when the fire controls end up actually engaging, that this system will pretty much run until it blows up, pretty much. Now, there are some uh, restrictions with this and that would be on the voltage side. The system, based on the manufacturer, will not allow uh, dirty, dirty power to the point where it will protect itself. It will reset and continue to continue to keep doing what it's doing. So that's the only restriction on this particular VFD. As in for actual programming, touching anything, you don't have to do any of that. What I recommend for maintenance is at least once a year have the electricians tighten up all the connections or yourself to you shut down the power. There is a disconnect over here that you can actually shut down the system. It will set off a, uh, a fault alarm with the fire panel saying, hey, there's no power to the unit. And you can actually do your maintenance check and tighten up all the connections that are required because obviously things will get loose over the period of time. Um, as in for the fire controls, uh, I'll leave that to it, but basically what you have is you have three individual picture wiring. You have a fire stop, which is basically a smoke duct detector, which I know the camera can't see, but in this actual duct work, there's a actual smoke duct detector that if there is a fire outside or somewhere in this garage and it gets uh, engaged into the actual fan system, it will actually shut down the fan itself for safety. So that's one. You have an actual uh, fault system and the fault system is set up that if anybody turns power off either here or off the actual main power or someone on a breaker it will send off a triggered alarm at the panel saying hey it's been tampered with there's no power so that system will work for because you know being in high rise and of course the last particular part is the actual fire control system which is called a st fan stop start so if there's an alarm in the building the fire control panel initiates it this goes right in, starts to go at specific hertz. Currently, if I remember correctly, this is set for 38 hertz. So that's something you may want to write down if you have a chance, because if, if something does, or if someone else decides to play with it, or another balance company or things like that, that was the pressure that was balanced by third party for the exact pressure for your doors to close and everything else. So that's something very extremely important to hold on to. As in for the maintenance, of the fan, which I don't know if the camera will be able to get to it, the fan itself obviously is suspended in the air. This particular housing that you have here, that we pull that housing off, will show the shiv and the two belts that are actually on the system. In order to get into the motor, you're going to have to pull off this plate, this actual plate on the front here. There's about 17 to 18 screws pull it out and then the motor is actually mounted directly to it. As in for maintenance of this, because this is a um, non-operational 24 hour, you know, it's, it's on standby 99% of the time, once a year I would recommend taking a couple squirts of grease 
and if you are doing a test once a year or, or biannually, to do it to check the belts. Okay. Uh, there's no filters, there's no other maintenance to it. It's pretty much a standby for an emergency. Now, is there any grease fittings or anything? Up yes, there are some grease fittings that are on the actual motor. Right. Some Zach Standard Zerk fittings. I would recommend probably high temp grease, probably the best, because we are in Arizona. It does right. get pretty hot if they are going to run, and you want to run in the emergency aspect continuous okay. until that point closes. Um, this is your disconnect. The only thing I would recommend at this point, and I know that the fire marshal didn't probably get it, but because it is hooked up to a fire life system, I would recommend that you have actually a, a lock, either to drill a lock through here to hold the disconnect in place so no one actually tampers with it. Uh, is there any questions? This does pretty much the uh, east side of the stairwell, pretty much all the way up. There are grills that are pretty much every other floor going up that have OBDs. They've already been pressurized, but already been checked by test and air balance by a third party. As an addendum to this supply fan system, I want to also point out a very a specialized control that you may want to keep in mind. One of the things about these supply fans, you'll notice that in the 2x4 uh, galvanized box with the gray actual liquid type, it's a pressure sensor. That is designed to go with the fire control system to notify the fire control system that if a belt breaks, that because the belt will break, you won't have the pressure to close that switch. It will automatically notify uh, the fire control system knowing that the fan has failed. And so while you're doing your test biannually or so, uh, if the belts do break and you can always test the system by taking the belts off, the system will engage, will set off an alarm at the fire panel allowing you to know that the pressure switch is operational. But what it's designed for is while you do these biannual tests, that if it does break, it will send a signal to the fire panel saying there's a failure on the fan due to the belts. So just keep that in mind. To the next segment uh, over at the link, we're here to discuss the owner training of the equipment that happens to be up on the roof. Currently, there are three large pieces of equipment on the roof. We have supply fan one, which is what we have already gone through on supply fan two. Very similar, the only differences between the types of equipment is the one that was on the seventh floor is a seven and a half horsepower motor. The one on the 31st floor, which is the roof, is a 10 horsepower motor. The controls and the variable frequency drives are exactly the same. The only differences with that is the Hertz compared to the other one, which was 38. The other one up on the roof is 25. So the same sequence of operation with the fire control systems is identical. The other pieces of equipment that happen to be on the roof are RTU-1 and RTU-2. RTU-1 happens to be the large Daikin uh, multi-speed uh, makeup air unit. It's 100% outside makeup air. Uh, how it has been run is how obviously it's been started by factory, but uh, there's no sensors in the building that uh, were scope of work based on the mechanical plant. So what the manufacturers did is ended up putting a discharge air temperature sensor with a return air temperature sensor for the equipment in order to get a particular type of pressure and temperature that they want to have based on test and air balance. Currently, if I remember correctly, it is set at about 74 degrees. It can be adjusted. It is a micro -tech controller. Uh, when I have an opportunity after this video, I will do a hands-on with you as a building engineer to show you the intricate aspects and, and the passcode, which I believe is 2532, uh, if I remember correctly. If not, it is listed on there in actual documents that you can see once you open up the panel. So I'll end up going through the set points and how you can adjust them if uh, you need to adjust the actual corridor temperatures. As in for the maintenance of the equipment, there is no belts on the equipment. Uh, it is a self-contained system, just like very similar to a refrigerator. So you shouldn't have to put your gauges on or any of those kind of things uh, because it is a sealed system. But since there is no belts and the fans are centrifugal drive, they are just basically, like I said, no belts, there's really no maintenance except for maybe once a year doing the actual grease cirques. Filters, because it is 100% outside air, they are uh, two inch filters. Uh, depending on how the monsoons hit, as you well know, when we hit, we have a lot of dust storms. Uh, take that in consideration. Uh, if you have a large wall of dust, obviously it's going to go right into the filters. You're going to trash up the filters pretty quick. But knowing that we are pretty much on, theoretically on the 31st floor, you probably won't get hit as it would be on the lower end. So, but the average cycle is about 90 days as an average for a two inch filter. Does the system have any pressure trap alarm or local alarm or anything 
something like that on it? Not from what my understanding is, no. Uh, because the air balance has set all the registers to the exact flow that is required, it just maintains. But there's no filter alarm? Not, uh, there, is a, there is a filter alarm set by factory, uh, but it won't be going to any, you know, it's to unit related itself. I mean, it'll only give an alarm on the unit. So if, if the system does get hot, for instance, it may continue to operate for a period of time until the pressures get too low, uh, but usually the alarms will shut down the system. But like I said, every 90 days, you should be good. But there is a basic alarm, but you're not going to be able to know that until you say, oh, I'm hot in the actual corridor <laughs> because the unit shut down. Uh, there is a fire control system. The fire control system um, is set up for that particular unit. It happens to be in the fire command room that the worked with the fire control. So there is a couple push button switches that you can actually manually hit as well. Does that system automatically shut off an alarm? Yes. It does. So the stairwell fans come on? And yes. Well, the, it, it depends on a couple of things. Because they have duct detectors uh, throughout the system, um, the duct detectors, if they trip because of dust or drywall dust, it would trip an alarm. It would not necessarily be a full-fledged alarm. It would be a supervisory alarm, possibly, depending on how they stage the systems. Uh, when it comes to stairwells, they'll probably have to have thermal heads, more than likely, with the fire combination in order to engage those. So you have uh, other units that are actually just by itself working with a duct detector. But the point is, the fire system takes control of that unit yes. when it chooses to. Yes. Okay. If, since it's operational 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to maintain your corridor temperatures, if there is an alarm with fire and it's multiple level, then it has a shutdown, it shuts down the unit. So you're not pumping in fresh air to the building, so you can protect the building. And then obviously the stairwell pressurization fans will come on to pressurize the stairwells to keep the smoke and fire out so people can get out of the building while the elevators are shot down to the first floor. So, um, as in for the rest of the maintenance of it, uh, periodically, once a year, check up all the electrical, tighten up all the connections, those kind of things, filter maintenance, obviously, and greasing of the motors. As in for the fan motors, they are usually DC drives, there is no greasing. Modern technology has tried to limit most of the maintenance as much as possible that we have. So it's changed quite a bit. I've been in the field for about 30 years, so I've done with the old school everything you had to grease. Now it's only a couple items that you have to grease, and it's the main motor or anything else. Um, warranty. I know it's a big thing. Let me step back. Let's go back to RTU number two. RTU number two is a standard utilitarian train unit, uh, standard package unit. Uh, what we have for the controls for that, because you have a 30-foot, 30 30-story 30 shaft, is that we have a Honeywell 8000 programmable thermostat set, I believe, at 72 degrees, with a actual probe temperature in the return duct. So basically, you don't have to worry about getting into any controls in the shaft. You're actually, everything's going to be on the roof. As in for maintenance of this, uh, it is a sealed system, just like it would be on a refrigerator. So you don't have to check refrigerant levels because it is sealed. Now, if there is an issue, I'll get to that segment at that particular time. Filters, they are two-inch filters, about every 90 days as well. Um, outside air is very limited, uh, so you should be having extended uh, filter usage with that. They have direct drive, if I remember correctly, on that particular model. If it's not, it would be a belt drive. So as you check the filters every 90 days, check the tension of the belt. The belt should have about a half inch deflection on it. Uh, very easy to get to. Pull one panel, you have the entire motor. If it's on an adjustment cradle. So you just loosen two bolts, and then you have the center bolt that will actually adjust the motor for the tension of the actual belt. Very, very simple. Um, controls itself, uh, what I have done in the actual control cabinet, you will actually have a thermostat mounted on a 4x4 four four box with the actual control wiring with the temperature probe that is me measuring the actual temperature of the duct. So pretty straightforward. Um, all the rest of the controls are solid state. So the only thing that you have left is a, a contactor. It is pretty much left. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. Greasing of the motor. Uh, most of these lower style horsepower motors, one about horsepower and lower, most of the modern technology, they don't even have grease fittings. They're just, they're pre-greased from the factory. They wear them until they go and then you replace them. Uh, as in for the outdoor motor, same thing. So there's no greasing or actual maintenance. The only maintenance that I recommend is once a year, definitely tighten up the electronics of it and probably once every six months, depending on what dust factor or conditions of environment, clean the coils down. 
I'm going to be going over the warranty classifications of this particular equipment and what represents for our mechanical company, Spectrum Mechanical. What warranty covers and does not cover. There's a lot of confusion out in the uh, world with this, so uh, this is what Spectrum goes for. We do not cover filters, belts, power, and I think there's another, uh, any kind of infuses. So these are the general things that we request before we get a warranty request. A lot of times out in the field you hear, the unit doesn't work. That's all you hear. Well, there's a lot more that can make it work that may not. So the things that we request of the building engineers or maintenance technicians that are on the premises is to go through those four items for the most part. Uh, and if you have a water source system, it would be classified as strainers, as in for the water strainers. The reason why is because those are general maintenance items. So obviously, if there's a power spike in the building and it blew a fuse, uh, you need to check to see if it has a bad fuse um, and replace it to see if the unit actually operates. Same thing with filters. We get a lot of filter calls where they don't replace the filters. It actually you know, shuts down the unit, and that's a very expensive call for a service call. Uh, belts, obviously, general wear, uh, depending on the operation of the equipment. It could be operating 24 hours a day or it could be operating once a year, depending. But you need to check it either way. So um, those are the things that we classified that are not covered under warranty. So to uh, realize that if you do call us, and it might be in the afternoon saying, hey, this unit's not running, um, and it might be an electrical issue of some kind, and we roll up, obviously it could be a billable call. So we don't want you, obviously we don't want to do that, we want to serve you. So the issue is that it helps us as the company, represented for technician as well, that if you check those four or five items before we arrive, it gives us a heads up of what's really going on, that you've done your due diligence and it's our due diligence. Of course, we're going to cover uh, workmanship issues. I don't know the exact contract on this particular uh, facility. I believe it's a year, possibly two. I don't know. Uh, but I do know that uh, for the firm to point of at least a year while into it, we cover pretty much all workmanship and the actual labor and warranty of the equipment. Okay, we're here to overview the exhaust fans for the 8th through 30th floor toiletry only. So the system is set up that on every toilet there is a main central duct that tees into every individual apartment. Uh, and from that point you have this at the end of the west building. We have a inline exhaust fan that runs 24 hours a day that exhausts all the actual uh, exhaust gases from the toilet. Uh, maintenance that is required on this could be either or but based on the sound, it's going to be a uh, direct drive. It's 120. Uh, there, obviously, there's not going to be any maintenance to the actual motor because it's self-sealed. There's no greasing. There's no adjustments that are required. Uh, it just runs 24 hours a day. Each individual floor has its each individual fan. And with that, we'll have its own separate power source, obviously, for each one. Um, there is no centralized control for all of the exhaust fans. They're all individual. Okay, we're here to review the basic operation of a manual thermostat by Fredericks. Uh, currently, almost all the units in this building will have these particular style thermostats. I believe the only differences will be on the uh, penthouses. There is a different style thermostat on that. So the basic function of this thermostat, you have a low and a high speed. So the client can adjust based on how much velocity of air that they want to have in the room based on sound. They can change the actual fan speed. For the operation of this, you'll have system and obviously fan. So the system itself is individually manual. So which means that since it's not programmed as a auto changeover, they have to physically turn it in either in heating or in cooling what the customer would prefer. Very, very simple to do. So you hit the system button. Currently we are in cool, and you'll notice that it goes to off. Hit it one more time, you're in heat. You can actually adjust the temperature on the zone for the heating. Once completed, the heat will actually kick on and go. You can hit system again, go into cool, up or down motion determining the actual temperature. Pretty straightforward, there's not much uh, glitz to this. Fan system itself, you can actually fan on, as you'll see here, continuous or in auto mode based on what temperature when the unit wants to operate. Um, the only differences between a standard 
thermostat in this particular style is that we have a high-low. Uh, the color codes that you will see as the maintenance engineer, when you pull this apart, will represent all the same color code throughout all the equipment. We try to keep it very, very simple. Um, obviously, in a, in a major high-rise, we have numerous people that are working. Some people like to use different color codes. Uh, with this team, we keep the same color code throughout. Continuing with the owner training, we are currently on a VTAC unit, which is for the apartments. Um, we have your disconnect, which can be pulled out for power, as well as a switched disconnect that's inside the actual housing. This is the control cabinet. Control cabinet uh, comprises of a transformer, a solid state board, and a contactor. It's a little bit different than a standard air conditioner. A standard air conditioner would use 24 volts as a standard. This system has to use a combination of 120, 24 volts, and 22 volts DC. The DC side of it actually is what operates the uh, control system in here for the solid state board. It has the terminals just like a regular air conditioner, which you can actually check the input output to the actual thermostat for operation on it. The contactor is the only thing that's a little different. Also, Standard air conditioners use a 24 volt contactor. This particular unit, these style units use a 120 volt coil contactor. Maintenance that's required on here, obviously, you have a pleated filter. Uh, as our startup team went through, we ended up actually marking down the actual room number and the actual size of the actual filter in case something happens to it. Um, as in for the maintenance of these, these are direct drive units. So there's no oiling, greasing, or such. I would recommend due to uh, the way these systems are set up is probably once a year have them cleaned out. They do end up taking a little bit of dust from the outside. They are hoovered from the outside. Um, you have a sliding, manual sliding outside air. Um, a lot of hotels like to use that for uh, the extra airflow. Uh, it's been my experience that uh, because the clients constantly come in and out of the doors, you get plenty of airflow from your makeup air unit from the halls that that wouldn't necessarily do. You actually end up ruining, I wouldn't say ruin, but you, you uh, utilize more filter time. It takes up more dust and more debris from the exterior, obviously. Um, so I recommend just keeping it closed and it keeps more of the efficiency and keeping the, the apartment cooler. Um, let me see here. They are sealed, as you can tell. Uh, we have a condensate system. The condensate system does have an overflow uh, alarm on it. So if the condensate does get, you know, plugged to a point and everything, there is a shutoff mechanism built into it. Uh, PVC. Uh, let me see here. Supply duct is your standard flex. Nothing too fancy on that. Uh, all your model number and serial number, warranty information, amp draw information is, is basically right there in front of you. Um, these are pretty good little units. Is there any questions that you... Nothing? Pretty straightforward. Okay, we're currently in the fire command unit. The fire command unit has a mini split system, which is a little bit different than a standard DX unit. Mini splits are uh, highly efficient, usually in the high sear range, of, uh, anywhere between 20 to 28. This particular type of unit is designed by train. The maintenance requirements on this is once every 30 days, depending on the dust value. I know this unit's been operating for a couple months. Uh, probably needs to be changed out. You lift up the door, and what you have is you have actual movable thermostats, or should I say movable filters. And you can tell they're pretty dirty. They're going to need to be changed out. Uh, this is one of the issues that most mini splits have compared to a DX unit. The DX unit has a standard filter, so obviously you can get much more time out of it, up to possibly two months. But depending on how much dust is, I recommend that every 30 days that you wash these out. These are washable filters, so you don't have to replace them. Uh, as in for the maintenance of this, about once a year, check the electrical connections, obviously. Um, all the controls is classified as high voltage between the condenser and the air handler. We have direct digital controls that are running through a gray wire that goes over to a thermostat over on that wall. Um, so there's absolutely no thermostat between wiring wise between the air handler and the condenser. Um, so it's all high voltage. If something locks out, the procedure in order to reset these systems, which are extremely important, is that you leave, let's say that you turn this unit off and then you decide to turn it back on. A lot of times the system won't reboot because it's having an issue communicating with it. It might be for an hour. So what I recommend that you do is that you do turn it off, do the work that you're doing, turn it back on, go to the condenser, 
turn a condenser off, count approximately 10 to 12 Mississippi, reset the power, and the system will come back online because it communicates the way it's supposed to be set up. As in for maintenance of this particular equipment, we do have a solid state board that's in here, requires absolutely no maintenance. Again, once a year, tighten up the connections. We have a direct drive digital control fan. There's absolutely zero belts, zero grease fittings. They, they run to oblivion, basically. Um, I haven't had one fail yet in, in you know, 15 years putting these in, so it's been really good. Condensate, as you can see, tried to make it very simple. A lot of times you have uh, condensate pumps, which cause a little bit of a havoc. This particular system, we actually have your drain going right out, so it should be pretty much fine. Um, refrigerant lines, both of them are actually insulated. Now, a lot of people say, why? Because on a standard DX unit, you only have the suction side, which is your low side. Uh, this, for both sides, are actually the low side. It actually converts the refrigerant on a lower pressure, lower temperature at the condenser and puts pretty much solid liquid through the unit. So you get a high efficiency on it. Your standard unit would blow, let's say, around 40 to 45 degrees. I've seen lows 30, 35 degrees blowing out. That's why you get such cool rooms, because it's full liquid going through. Then comes back, goes into a receiver, and the system repeats itself. So very, very efficient, very, very quiet, uh, very, very reliable. Um, the amps, you will have a little bit of issue with, if, depending on the type of equipment that you decide to service with this, uh, because it's in watts. You have to convert the watts to amps, and you'll probably have to have an extra wire loom around your amp field in order to get the actual amperage on it. Some cases, they're less than a third of an amp, 20, 22 watts, 15 watts. Yeah, very, very efficient. So, um, but for maintenance-wise, uh, for condensate, um, you can get to the condensate system if you decide to pull the panel out, pull the filters out. You can, I would take a, a set of can air, if you would, disconnect your system here at this point and try to push any water or anything through the actual hosing so it doesn't rain. It does not require a P-trap because it is a positive uh, flow. Um, pretty straightforward. Has the options to have a remote, but we have a wired remote instead. Continuing on with the mini split system, we're going to be focusing on the controls. Uh, this is a very, very basic system. Uh, currently, it's been set up in manual mode. Um, it does have some uh, functionality for some basic programming, but uh, because most of these particular style units are in a secured area, such as a fire command unit, uh, your well pump area, your IDF uh, computer rooms, pretty much they are set to what temperature you want and you leave it and walk away. There is a couple other units that are exactly the same that will be in a public area of this building, but they will have a conduit with this type of thermostat, but we're going to have a lockable cover so the public won't be able to access it. So um, programming it is really not necessary for this point because uh, it will be based on the temperature that you desire at that point. Uh, it'll be 24 hours a day for the corridors, things like that. So just set it for manual and call it good. Uh, for operational purposes on it, you'll see that you have an enter clear, you have a function button, up, down, fan, a timer if you want to have it for a period of time, the actual mode, and you can actually have a physical button for off on. Pretty straightforward uh, explanatory. Your fan settings will show the speed of your fan, as it goes up, it'll increase as in more of a triangle. Uh, the actual uh, thermostat shows either a flame for heating or a snowflake for cooling. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and then obviously you have your temperature that you can actually adjust up or down and it just gives you the manual setting points. The systems uh, with this are direct digital controls. It's not a standard uh, thermostat or standard thermostat. You know, if you're familiar with it, basically standard wiring. This actually plugs into the actual board and then moves on right down, right into the thermostat. Continuing on with the owner training, we are currently in the retail area. So I'll be discussing the current DX train unit that happens to be up here. This is the air handler, this is half of the system. The particular air handler in here is encased in a polycarbonate style plastic, so it does not rust. It has a direct drive motor with an electronic TXB. So the new systems now with the ending style uh, control boards on here, they're all solid state. You have a no belts to worry about. The four panel, you see the large panel and then you see the small panel with the model number and serial number. The small panel that you see, the four individual uh, turn knobs, they get to be pulled out and you can actually put a filter that already has a filter rack built into the system. Very, very simple easy maintenance. Uh, currently the system is not in operation, but it will give you an idea what it does. So, um, as in for maintenance for the inside, once a year, obviously, 
lighten up the connections, electrical connections. They are wire nutted. They do use standard standard 18-8 uh, plenum rated wiring that you'll see that's hanging there. Uh, in the video, we obviously can't see, but over to your left over there, you have actually three thermostat wirings for the other parts of the system. You're going to have a, a train touchscreen style thermostat on it. Uh, it's pretty much straightforward. Probably have a lock. They, those will be able to be locked out at the actual thermostat. Okay. So there won't be any need for putting a lock box or anything because you know people are going to knock it off. They're going to knock it off. But the, the deal is, is that the thermostat is lockable. So at that point in time. Um, the refrigerant lines obviously uh, are insulated. If you notice, there's only one style that's insulated, not the other compared to the mini split. This is a standard DX. I believe up in the parking garage is the condensers. The condensers have a solid state board with a hard start kit, uh, standard sealed system from your regular compressor. Three, you know, I think it's uh, all single phase in this building for that part. Um, so there's no worrying about rotation aspects or anything like that. Uh, what else? Maintenance on those. Uh, definitely because they're in the garage, you're going to be having a little lot more dust and exhaust running through there. Probably once every six months, I would shut it down, rinse out the coil. Coil is pretty, you know, they all have hail guards on them, so they won't damage the coils, but you can wash them out. Uh, controls are terminated by standard wire nuts, once every six months to a year, tighten them up. It's got a solid state board, uh, gives you troubleshooting aspects right on the plate if there's any issues. Um, as discussed with the warranty with us, um, we're going to be doing the workmanship obviously and of course if there's any failure of the equipment during the warranty period, by all means you have to give us a call. Um, but how the, the process works is that UEB, we have to go through UEB first, so if you have a warranty request, you write out that warranty request to UEB. UEB turns around, sends that warranty request to Spectrum. Spectrum, uh, pretty much, uh, we end up taking it over from there. Our uh, lead time for usually response uh, is usually within 24 hours. Sometimes we get there within hours, depending on how it is. We're pretty good at trying to you know, take care of you as a customer. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, everybody is satisfied and we get done with the equipment that needs to be done. Uh, one thing added to conclude this um, owner training uh, is that I would recommend when the job is fully closed out that when UEB turns over the O&Ms and the submittals and all the prints of the equipment is take some time to review the uh, owner's manuals and O&Ms and just uh, brush through them to get more familiar with the equipment. Uh, obviously as a video I can't teach every aspect of the equipment but they will give you all the manufacturer specifications, obviously the sequence of operations and how it works and all the ins and outs. It's a little time consuming but it would be definitely worth your while to you know, spend a day just to go through it to get more familiar with the equipment. And other than that, uh, if there's any questions, any concerns, comments, um, I'm here to help you.